Hi everyone, it's Erin. Today I'm going to be doing a little bit of work in a cubicle. We are the first indoor species. We spend about 95% of our life inside. And if that's surprising to you, you're not alone. Put another way, we are spending about 22 hours a day inside. Even today's kids spend half the time playing outside compared to their parents. Oxford Junior Dictionary sees this trend. They've replaced the word beaver with blog and completely taken out fern, lobster, sycamore, and dandelion. That's a change. For the first time ever, more than half the world's population lives in cities. Cities are designed to get us from building to building, but uh, what about nature? What about the outdoors and the wild? What if we're all living in cities and we don't really get outside anymore? Hey, I'm Erin and I'm a travel photographer and writer and I want to know what the future of the outdoors looks like. Hey everyone, so I just landed in Chicago. I've never been here before and I'm excited to be uh, experiencing a new city. It is beautiful here. So as much as I love beautiful buildings and beautiful cities, there aren't a lot of natural spaces here, um, but it looks like that is changing. Sunshine, trees, walking. You may have felt that getting outside is good for your health. Like for me, I have to go outside to calm down, to feel better. <laughs> it's necessary. But it might be necessary for you too. More and more studies are showing that lack of direct sunlight causes health issues, such as vitamin D deficiency, which can contribute to tiredness, fatigue, and low mood. And it's easy to see why in a city. I mean, it's artificial light. You're not seeing nature. You're not seeing the sunrise or the sunset. And there are some days when you might not even get to experience the sun. Um, so I get it. This isn't only mental. Dr. Levine of Arizona State University claims that we have created for ourselves a modern way of living that clashes with the way we're meant to be. And his studies have shown that the more sedentary we are, the more at risk we are of sitting ourselves to death. Which is kind of terrifying, but maybe it's the wake-up call we need. So since we're all moving towards cities, could we design them to help us get outdoors? I wanted to go to three cities across the country that are taking back access to wild spaces and making sure anyone can choose to get outside. What happens when people start dreaming around an old industrial site? Big Marsh is a steel mill turned bike park in the southeast side of Chicago. Located on almost 300 acres of open space, it's helping to contribute to the creation of an outdoor recreation hub just 25 minutes from the urban core of Chicago. My name is Stephen Bell. I'm the center director at Big Marsh Park. In the past, before the park district took it over, that the site was used as a dumping ground for byproducts of the steel making industry. So all sorts of stuff, whether you know bowling balls, we pulled cars out, uh, mattresses, box springs, like you name it, it's dumped there. So I'm with Chantel. Hi! <laughs> She's gonna get me on a bike. And she will find out how coordinated I am, or uncoordinated. So for anybody into biking, this is huge because there are so many tracks to explore. Um, and it's just so nice to think that uh, people can be getting outside in a place like this in the middle of their city. My name is Brenda and I'm actually from um, this area here. The fact that it's out, outdoors and in an urban area, we don't have many forest reserves in our city. It has its own psychological effect on you and, and its own healing effect on you, just enjoying the outdoors. This area, which had no use before, uh, is, is now being really well, repurposed into something that, that everybody can enjoy. And this is basically right out my back door. Okay, so there are also four other past industrial lands that will eventually all be connected, creating a place to bike, hike, paddle, and climb, all within the city of Chicago. But for many, urban living means urban transportation, and that means not having access to a car. This makes accessing wilderness spaces incredibly challenging, especially in places like LA. But what if cities helped make that easier? Okay, this is me. Last year, LA made a bus available to take hikers specifically to hike from the city. So I took the bus from a suburb in LA to the San Gabriels. I am on a bus right now up to Runyon Canyon with 
which is a hike close to LA. So I just got dropped off by the bus and the hike is just up here, a few blocks. People are excited about the opportunity to access the mountains. The Memorial Park to Sam Merrill Trailhead had over 9,000 riders from April through August. Which all just goes to show that we are homesick for our natural habitat and that it's time to change course. While this is nice, not everyone has time or mountains nearby, even if they want to get outside. And that's where commuting comes in. DC's Capital Trails Coalition is creating a 20-year plan that will create one of the largest trail networks in the U.S. This regional initiative helps connect over 700 miles of trails. My name is Katie Harris and I'm the Trails Coalition Manager. Our roadways are more and more packed every single day. And so it's really important for us that we're building systems where people don't have to rely on their cars. They can rely on walking and biking and transit. People now, they use trails to commute to work, recreationally, just to be outside. And the trails aren't just for transportation. It's about public health. It's about having greener space. It's about the environment. Trail networks are, con are connecting people to the communities, to other communities, and then, and then in turn to the businesses and people that are, reside and work in those communities. Other cities are starting to take notice of the benefits of green spaces, like the Atlanta Beltline, the San Francisco Bay Area Ridge Trail, or New York City's High Line. We know that our natural habitat is good for us. It's even been shown that patients with a hospital window and daylight have better chances of healing. Sitting in a cubicle and just sitting indoors, some of it is unavoidable, of course, if we have jobs or we have responsibilities, but uh, Let's be making an effort to get outside and get back to our nature. So one example of this is a sunset. It happens once a day, right? It's beautiful. It puts you totally in the moment. So when was the last time that you stopped and, and saw one? Thank you all so much for watching this episode. We were really excited to share it with you and we're really looking forward to covering some interesting topics in the outdoors, things that you care about. So uh, whatever your comments are about this episode, we would love to hear them as well as any future ideas that you have. So leave them in the comments below and we'll see you next time.